I'm here today with Jack Reed, who is the Business Development Manager and Technical Advisor at SM Magnetics and is part of the series on motors. Uh, today's series is about haulback assemblies and how haulbacks are working in more than normal that we see today in, um, in motors. So uh, Jack, welcome. Hey, welcome. how are you? Good. So Jack, I noticed that you brought us a haulback here and I'm going to ask you if you can just to start this thing off, just explain a little bit about what the red arrows are and this haulback assembly. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So um, in a in a haulback, the difference between a haulback array and a standard configured array, whether it be a rotary array or uh, any north-south, north-south permanent magnet array, is that the orientation is different of each magnet fitting together in this specific configuration. So you'll see these red arrows here show the different orientations of each magnet in this array. And as you can see here, once I put the magnetic film over it, it's still just two poles. So although there are 12 magnets, all with differing orientations, there are still only two poles of this haulback array, which is something that we do not see necessarily with your typical permanent magnet array. So Jack, what's the benefit of using a haulback versus say a typical north-south, north-south configuration? So the benefits of a haulback array over just your typical north-south, north-south configuration, the biggest one is going to be efficiency. Um, we see a lot in who we work with typically now on these electric vehicles. Obviously, we're in 2021, a lot of electric vehicles out on, the, out on the road right now. And one of the biggest things you see, and if you've ever ridden in a car that is electric, um, you'll see that the torque is insane. I mean, zero to 60 times are crazy. And we like to say that that's most likely because of this haulback array. Another thing that we see in, in the electric vehicles actually with the haulback arrays are the eddy current braking systems. Um, and that would be like a regenerative braking system that then adds to the uh, energy of the car. So kind of a double use there, um, but mainly for efficiency. So Jack, I, I get the concept that these are very efficient. Haulbacks are very efficient motors. So why doesn't every motor manufacturer just switch over and use a haulback or a haulback assembly? So really, haulbacks aren't going to be your end all be all. You still have to go to your end goal and figure out what's best for you. And another thing, of course, is the cost. I mean, cost efficiency is going to be a big thing for a lot of these designs and applications. And it's higher cost than your typical rotor, uh, you know, such as this. And so it really just has to do with a, a cost benefit analysis. Uh, so once we get down to what you need as your end goal, then we know whether or not this will work best for you or if possibly just a rotor would work best. Okay, so it's really a cost benefit that goes in with haulbacks is what exactly. it comes down to. Exactly. So do you simulate haulbacks to see what that cost benefit could be? Of course, um, and, and we would simulate the haulback as well as if there was a, a rotor, you know, a, a north-south, north-south configuration, we could do, you know, benefit analysis and cost analysis um, from that perspective. And obviously we would simulate all of those to get the most precise results. That's so, so I also noticed you have a linear haulback here yes. um, versus a circular one. Uh, why have a linear one? So in terms of the linear haulback, uh, this would be more for a linear motor, one that's going to be moving directly across on an even plane rather than going around. Um, obviously within this haulback, all of the uh, magnetic field is going to be within the ID of this. And the magnetic field here is going to be above it. You see how these you know, arrows are pointing in different directions. Those are the orientations, much like of this circular haulback. But instead, this field is coming up here. So we're really trying to focus this field and narrow it to be very uniform and very strong on one side of this linear. Is that why you see so much less magnetic field on the other side? That is exactly correct. Uh, okay. We're really trying to push this magnetic field and this specific configuration is pushing the magnetic field in one specific direction in a very uniform manner. So Jack, in one of our other videos, which was the rotary uh, motor video, we talked about wires and gauge size and everything. Does the same issue exist, gauge size versus uh, haulbacks that it did in the rotary? How would you define the wire need? So with a haulback, much like with your other standard north-south configuration motors, 
it's going to have all the same con uh, you know, considerations. You're gonna to have to look to the end of your application, of your end goal, and work backwards from there. Uh, that's what we like to see. So yes, of course, wire gauge would be a big part of that. Um, as we see with, you know, like I said, a, a normal north-south configuration, we're gonna to have to get the correct wire gauge size. Um, and that's just something that is going to be in every motor, okay. not just in haulbacks, not just in rotary, but yes, definitely in haulbacks as well as a, a rotary motor. Okay, so Jack, to finish up here with the uh, with the folks watching, what suggestions would you give them when it comes to looking at a haulback design for their motors? So firstly, I'd like to look at the configuration, the orientation of the configuration. Uh, as I said before, go to the end. Make sure that you know what efficiencies you need, uh, what cost you need for something like this. As I said, it's a bit higher cost than your typical permanent motor magnet. Um, so it's one of those things that's really a, a cost benefit analysis. And is it going to be more beneficial to you to have a higher efficiency motor and higher cost? It's going to be much higher efficiency, but it's also going to be higher cost than your typical rotary that's you know, just going to be in your standard motor. Okay, Jack, thank you very much. Um, and if you'd like to get in touch with Jack, his email address will be put on the bottom of the screen. So thanks, Jack. Yep, thank you, Michael. Uh -huh.